People have some pretty weird ideas about what life as a dermatologist is actually like. Whenever I tell anyone what I do for work, I usually hear one of the following things. W when are you gonna do my Botox and filler for me? Is it like a Dr. Pimple Popper? I have this mole on my butt. Do you mind if we should go to the bathroom and I can show you just really quick? Please don't show me or send me pictures of your butt. It gets really hard to explain when my wife goes through my camera roll. Dermatology is one of the most popular fields in the world of medicine. But I wonder, do people actually know what a day in the life of a dermatologist looks like? Well, in this video, you're about to get a taste. My name is Dr. Sayed, AKA Real skin doctor and I'm a dermatologist working in New York City. On this channel I give evidence-based skincare advice that you can trust as well as talking about my life as a dermatologist in New York. So if you're interested in either of those things give the channel a subscribe so it's easier to keep track of my videos. Without further ado let's get into it. My day starts at 5 30 a.m. when the alarm clock goes off. I remember that I'm a dermatologist and not a surgeon, say a prayer of gratitude and go back to sleep until 7 30 a.m. when I actually wake up refreshed. I open the blinds and feel blessed to live in a rare New York City apartment with plenty of natural light. Looking over at the peloton, I make a promise that tomorrow I'll wake up earlier so that I can exercise before work. The next day, I break this promise. Next, I keep things simple and use a gentle hydrating cleanser to wash my face first thing in the morning. Before heading to the kitchen to make myself some coffee. Okay guys, so when Shreen and I first came to New York, we used to drink instant coffee like almost every other person in England. Then I moved to New York and I remember one of the first shops I went into and asked for instant coffee. The guy looked at me as if I just flashed him. So from that point on, we knew we had to up our coffee game and this is now how I make my morning cup of coffee. Okay, the Botox and filler one might be true, but do you have any idea how long a wait list we have of family and friends for our Botox? It's amazing how many distant relatives emerge from the family tree as soon as they hear there's a dermatologist in the family. I'm looking at you, Nasreen auntie. I've recently started eating low-fat Greek yogurt with chopped fruit for a nice healthy breakfast. I'll usually add just a tiny pinch of peanut butter on top. I'm amazed by how delicious this low-fat healthy breakfast can be. Like a real adult, I enjoy my coffee while reading important newspaper articles. Good shots, good shots! Yeah, all day, all day! My intestines tell me it's time to make a move. Then I have a quick shower, apply an appropriate layer of subtle sunscreen, and tell the sun to do its worst now that I'm ready. Next, it's time to get changed and pack my bag. Can anyone tell which scrubs company my wife Shreen works with? Okay, so it's 8.30 now and we're gonna head out. My morning routine in total takes around one hour because I like to chill, whereas Shireen wakes up about three minutes before she has to leave the door, runs around like a hurricane and then ends up getting changed in the elevator. But for me, I take my time, take around one hour and now we're ready to head out. Hey, so how's it going, man? Thank you. I live near the bottom left side of Central Park and my clinic is in the Upper East Side. So I actually ride my electric scooter through the park to get to work. I get to avoid the dingy subway and it's actually a really fun way to travel. The scooter can actually go pretty damn fast and I probably look like a blur to people as I fly past them. I get to the office and say hi to the receptionists, usually at around 8.50 a.m. So this gives me around 10 minutes to settle in before patients are due to arrive. So I'm only really at this tedious location for one day per week, which is why I haven't done much decorating to this office because the other days it's used by other providers and they probably don't like my wedding photos as much as I do. But before the rest of my patients arrive for the day, let me just give you a quick tour of the clinic. I really love the decor and vibe at the clinic I work in. It's quite quirky and doesn't feel cold and sterile like a lot of doctor offices can. Now this is gonna sound a lot like one of those classic interview answers that people say but don't mean, but honestly, when it comes to dermatology, the thing I love about it is how varied it can be. So for example, on my schedule today is like around 40 patients, and I can go from room to room. In one room, it can be a 90-year-old gentleman with skin cancers all over his body that we have to do biopsies and skin checks for. And in the next room, I can go in and it might be a two-month-old infant with a hemangioma somewhere on their face. And you know, the mom is worried about how that's gonna affect their development. 
So it's just so varied and I just love being able to see patients across that entire spectrum because it keeps the day really fun. Now obviously because of patient confidentiality issues I can't take you into each of those rooms with me um, but I did film with Shira a little walkthrough of what it looks like uh, for the patient when they come to an office like mine. So Shira takes the patients from the waiting area to one of the examination rooms. She then asks them a bunch of information like their chief complaint, their medical history, reviews their medications and puts that kind of information into the chart. She then comes to me and relays that information, after which I walk into the room, speak to the patient myself, and I'm able to develop a nuanced treatment plan. We usually then give the patients some goodie bags filled with sample creams, which ends up being their favorite part of the visit. Now, when it comes to dermatology, a lot of people have this idea that all we see is acne, eczema, and then we do maybe some Botox and filler injections. And while it's true that a pretty big percentage of our patients do have some pretty run-of-the-mill skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, acne, every now and then skin disease can be really extensive and really debilitating. That means when it comes to our management, yes, we prescribe things as simple as an antifungal cream or a topical steroid, but from time to time I have to prescribe infusion medications that are basically anti-cancer therapies or that shut down the body's immune system, and that's all part of a day's work. Now, it's not for the faint-hearted, but for anyone who thinks dermatologic disease Disease is only basic common skin rashes. Feel free to Google one of these words on the screen here around me, but don't say I didn't warn you. So yeah, definitely not just Botox and filler. Although speaking of which, I can't deny I do love being able to do procedures. So in between building these long-term relationships with patients and dealing with complicated medical conditions, every now and then you'll have a procedure that you can do which gives instant gratification. So for example, someone might have a wart and you can freeze it off, or they could have a scar and you can inject it with steroid, or a prominent blood vessel and you can use a laser device to help treat it. And getting a chance to do those kind of procedures, firstly, it's just fun if you're someone who likes to do mechanical things with their hands. Secondly, it gives those instant results that I mentioned and you get a satisfied patient and that makes you feel quite gratified. And then finally, you can break up the monotony of your day. So, you know, a lot of the times some doctors will just be sitting at a desk the entire day talking. And as much as it is fun talking to different people and you have to keep your mind engaged because there's all of these different medical conditions you're dealing with, there's no denying that being able to get up and do a procedure every now and then it does keep the day nice and varied. So it's something I absolutely love about being a dermatologist. Depending on how much time I have, I'll either take a stroll outside or order some food to the office. Now every doctor is a little bit different, but when I'm in the room with a patient, I don't like typing on the keyboard, even if I'm really good at multitasking, which I'm not, but even if I was really good at multitasking, I don't think it's a good look, and the patients always get the sense that you're not giving them your full attention if you're not maintaining eye contact with them. So I make sure that when I'm in the room, I'm not looking at the computer screen, I'm not typing away, and I'm just looking at them. The medical assistants will often help you, you know, writing things down like physical exam findings if you say them out loud, and they'll be taking notes on the patient's history, especially if they're superstars like my medical assistant. And then what will happen is I will come to my office whenever I take a break in between like say a stretch of four or five patients and I'll go through the notes, making adjustments, adding details, confirming the orders and then also something that happens here in the US system which the UK doctors and maybe people from other countries might not be aware of is once you've done the notes you also then do the first round of billing where you put in depending on the complexity of the appointment what you think should be the amount that you bill the insurance company for that visit. There's also some insurance companies that are famous for trying to fight you on every single thing you bill so they'll try and contest every charge and say oh that wasn't indicated or we're not going to pay for that one because they had that done two months ago. The amount of money at the end of the month that you're anticipating you build. In reality, you might only get around 60 to 70 percent of that because insurance companies will just refuse to pay the other 30 percent. It's kind of messed up, right? But you know what else is even more messed up? Apparently, only five percent of you who are watching this video are actually subscribed. I honestly don't know which of those things is upsetting me more. I'll take a look at it first. That's okay. because yeah, if it's softening, then we'll change the concentration. She said it got, it's gone down inside, like okay. it's gotten much better. So I'm going to talk to you just about the kind of patients that I've seen in the past as a dermatologist and a dermatology trainee. So for example, there's a young girl being brought in by her mother who says that she always breaks out in a rash every time she goes out into the sun in the park. Then there's a 60-year-old gentleman who has never been to see any doctor before, but comes in complaining that he has some kind of rash on his scalp. When I look at it in closer detail and take a biopsy it ends up being a squamous cell skin cancer and that requires surgical excision. I also get a lot of patients coming in complaining of a generalized itch. So it is 7 10 it's the end of our day we had a pretty busy ending right Vanessa? Pretty long day yeah. That was a pretty long day so we started at 9 o'clock and we worked all the way through to 7. I say we really it was Vanessa doing most of the work because she was rooming the patients doing everything else and then I was co-signing notes but <laughs> I still think it was a team effort. 
So this is the first time Vanessa and I have actually worked together. Yeah. So Vanessa, why don't you tell them your honest opinion of what it's like to work with me? Remember that I can edit this out. <laughs> All right, honestly, yep. this was a good learning experience. Okay. I got good feedback without even asking for feedback. There you go. Um, I learned a lot on acne as well as like the cysts. Okay, so there you go. We learned a lot together and we will continue to get better and better yep. as a team. Yep. High five. There you go. Look at that. She read the script I sent her. How much do I owe you for this? 50. 50. Okay, I'll Venmo you. I'll Venmo you. <laughs> Cut that part out. Now, a lot of people think dermatologists don't work hard, but all I'm saying is I've been here from 9 a.m. and it is now 7.25 p.m. Seen almost 45 patients today and it can go up to around 60 patients in one day. But you know what? Even during the long days, I actually feel really grateful because I enjoy my job. There's a lot of people I get to talk to. I'm not just sitting in an office all day. I'm speaking to different humans. They're telling me their problems and I am helping to fix them. I feel grateful every single day to be able to say that I work as a dermatologist in the best city in the world. Okay, so that is a wrap. It is the end of our work day. I'm going to go just get my scooter and head back across the park. So for those of you who don't know, I did my medical school in the UK and I graduated back in 2016, at which point I came out here to New York. And I remember I used to sit in this exact part of Central Park back then when I came out here on my own without any friends or family. And I'd sit at these stairs and stare at Bethesda Fountain, which is what is down there. And I would think to myself, oh, I really wish one day that I could live here. And at the time I had done my US Assembly step one, but I was still on my US application journey. And I kept looking around at people thinking, oh, you're so lucky that you get to live in New York. And I used to see the doctors in the hospital and I'd think, you're so lucky you get to be doctors out here in the US. And now sometimes I just sit here and reflect that five years on from that date, back in 2016, now it's 2021. And I just think to myself, all praise and gratitude belongs to God who helped me to get into this position. And I'm just so, so grateful and I feel so blessed. And I hope that I can always remember that feeling I used to have when I sat on these steps, where I wish that I could be in the position that I'm in right now and that it doesn't just become normal to me. Thankfully, before I got too emotional, a group of tourists came and crashed my shot. I realized that I only have a few minutes left to do one of my five compulsory prayers of the day. So I make another brief stop before continuing my journey through Central Park, which always feels like a TV show. On this day, I stumbled upon an actual game of kickball. Being the English sports hooligan that I am, I got way too into it and was asked to leave. I make it home soon after, but today it's actually an instant turnaround because Shireen and I are invited for dinner at our friend's apartment. For those who don't know, my wife Shireen is currently an internal medicine doctor here in New York too. So with both of us working full time, dividing chores like cooking and cleaning can be a challenge. We're pretty fluid with it and depending on whose schedule is easier that week, we'll take turns on who does these tasks. But today, we're clearly both enjoying being pampered by our friends. After what looks like my fifth helping of mac and cheese, we head home. I massage my feet and then spend some time assessing my progress on YouTube. The blue line is unsubscribed and the green one is subscribed. Why is that so much higher? I do my nighttime skincare routine, which always involves a retinoid cream, and then it's time for bed. So now that you've seen what a day is like in the life of a dermatologist, tell me truthfully, was it how you expected it? Do you have any questions about anything I showed here and what else would you like to see more of? Comment below because I personally read every single one and it'll give me more video ideas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.